After a tide of publicity, the new album by the pop group Oasis has at last reached the shops, but for some critics, the launch is as much of a marketing event as a musical one. <laughs> Not so much a crush as a polite gathering of Oasis fans outside the HMV record store in London's Oxford Street this morning. At times, they appeared outnumbered by the media, and some admitted to ulterior motives for getting up so early. Free break, break first, first listen to the music, then buy it. I heard a couple of tracks on Radio 1, and they seem really good. It's the greatest band of the world. Now, after the Beatles. Three, two, one, yay! The parallel with the Beatles is intentional. The title of the new album, Be Here Now, is a quote from John Lennon, and the band have made no secret that the Beatles are their single most important influence. Thirty years ago, it was the Beatles themselves who were making the headlines, but they also lost money. Their business partnership, Apple Corporation, ended up with virtually no assets. Oasis are unlikely to make the same mistake. They're estimated to have generated more than £40 million in earnings since 1994. Rock and roll is a mature business. But producing a world-beating album is a different matter. The biggest selling album in the UK is the Beatles' Sgt Pepper, with four and a quarter million sales. The biggest selling album worldwide by a British band is Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd on 23 million. And the biggest selling album ever is Michael Jackson's Thriller on 47 million. In the UK, Oasis are still outsold by the Spice Girls, the ultimate embodiment of a band created by the marketing industry. Oasis are very much more a grassroots indie band who have their own independent route to success, um, besides the marketing that, they've been, you know, that, that has been given to further their career. Even so, Oasis have generated enormous publicity for the new album. It could turn out to be the marketing coup of the year. Greg Wood, BBC News.